This is Near Enough to Hell, a Ghost of El Paso story, part six. What the fuck? Let's take a recap of where we left off previously. We were in the middle of a day phase. Now we have Daniel back this week, so we're going to get to jump in with some new stuff with Arkansas. But going through our current hunters, Mother Ruth Calvo is most beloved and currently pious, so does not have access to her vice uh, and all those fun little mechanic details that come with it. Uh, Graves has the hangman knows death touch and read all about it. Marshall Andrew Harrington's got jumping at shadows and the calamity Arkansas McGee is hung over with debilitating cramps, ampersand, am I a ghost? Plural question mark. Very well phrased. Um, so we had last time gone through the night phase where our hunters had a few different things happen. Um, we had graves kind of get inter, uh, uh, you know, graves intended actions for the night were interrupted by uh dr jebediah f clarkson's ghost be gone stall and a crowd that kind of uh gathered in the streets and were uh, asking many questions and graves had a very tense kind of a standoffish uh conversation with with mr clarkson uh while ruth and the marshal went to the riverview hotel the marshal to sneak into the bounty hunter's chambers there ruth to run point as a distraction until the bounty hunter came to the hotel shot Ruth, who miraculously still lived, and then had a showdown with Andrew before was temporarily banished by uh, Ruth's proclamations of faith. Although such actions have not helped Andrew Harrington's case as the fight itself and the subsequent uh, banishing of, of the Revenant, the rumor mill is beginning to turn a little bit harder in the direction of like, what is the marshal hiding if he's so willing to fight back? He must be guilty, clearly. Um, so there are there's there things are happening. But we're gonna first of all open on Arkansas's bedchambers inside the back of the brothel, which I believe is currently unnamed, unless you have a name for it. I forget if it's lists the name. It's got a name, I think it's the um the blue tin. The boarding uh, house, the blue tin roof, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the boarding house, the blue tin roof. That's right. That's right. Blue tin roof. So, you had a pretty bad night, <laughs> not just between the cramps and all that, just general restlessness. But at dawn's first light, shaking off the ill effects of whatever you've got going on at any given moment, because we're still in the day phase, I now have to introduce. The last ride of Blackheart Vermilion as our fourth active threat. So, despite everything, Arkansas, you force yourself to get up and head down to the banks of the Rio Grande, where Vermilion herself met you carrying her old black and red tack and saddle which she began to put on the horse you've brought for her, which this horse seems to know her, regard her with familiarity, even though they've never met. Vermilion talks as she saddles up the horse. The feller who shot me, the coward Jim McKinley, is near. He's bounced around since we last met, working for the El Paso stagecoach line and then hiring on with a crooked rancher north of El Paso. They've been rustling cattle on both sides of the border and we're gonna stop them. Catch is, I ain't alive. So you'll have to fill in some blanks for me on this one, partner. Blackheart slings herself up onto the saddle atop the horse. When you're ready, meet me at Four Aces Ranch. Mother Ruth, a question for you. Something happened at Four Aces Ranch, and now it's abandoned. What was it? I think... Ooh. There was a, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, there was a bed and breakfast 
at the Four Aces Ranch, uh, a, a way station, not a bed and breakfast, but like a way station, a place for travelers to stop. Um, and uh, the two family, uh, the two the, the two family members there is a brother and a sister. Uh, the let's just call them the Llewellyns would take travelers and would not take every traveler that stopped by, but ones that fit a profile, some lone travelers, people stopping off looking for a, a place to sleep, some food in their belly, would take them, murder them, and use their bodies to help fertilize their crops and things of that nature. And eventually, the Llewellyns were found out about uh, and were dealt with uh, through Western justice, which was to be hanged high in the middle of the day and then to sit there until they were dead. You know, some say you can still hear the creak of the wood on the gallows to this very day. Very good. Blackheart looks up at El Paso up there on the ridge. The coward Jim Kinley's here. I can sense his presence tainting this whole town. Help me find him. I'm begging you on this one, partner. And then she just turns, holding the uh, the reins of the horse, and rides north. Leaving you standing there on the banks of the El Paso, watching her go. So, we still are in the middle of a day phase. And I would like to get a read for what other hunters are interested in doing, what scenes we'd like to get to. As a reminder of where we left off, kind of with some of these other scenes, we did have um, another strange meeting with Del Sol inside the cell, for one thing, um, which yielded some clues. So let's take a look at the, our, our slate of threats and the, um, the Daisy Man has a complexity six question. You'll have three clues available currently. So available to answer with a minus three penalty, but you know, we're getting there. Ghost be gone. You guys currently have four clues for that. And any of those options are still available. No clues on black heart. Just start that. And then the bounty hunter, you got three clues and that's a complexity of four question. So that one's getting close. So with all this in mind, do, do any of them have uh, clocks? Let me take a look. Let me refresh myself on are four threats a number i've never run before i feel like so something should have a clock on it i feel like uh, i feel like one of them does like if it's, my... it's ghost be gone i think no yeah. wait ghost oh, be gone doesn't have a clock but it, like it things do happen over time mm -hmm. with that one um daisy man so the the daisy man one has been ignored enough that uh there might be some developments on that one uh, pretty soon, but there's no formal like clock on that one. And were you going to say chaotic? Yeah, like if, if like there's going to be clocks on anything, it would be one of the playbook threats because I do know like no threats typically in Ghost of El Paso do not have clocks. Uh, so I don't think the bounty hunter has a clock. Uh, I'm it not just sure has about an the last. It, it, yeah, it has yeah. an ignore state. Um, none Rebel, of the, Rebel, uh, Rebel Gold has a clock. Rebel Gold has a clock, but yeah, that one's on play right now. So yeah, we're no no like formal mechanical countdowns. But I mean, some things are probably going to happen very soon with the uh, with one or two of these. Um, but I guess we'll we'll see. So no huge developments right out of the gate. So let's see, going in. Just I want to take a look at a. Uh, uh, Mother Ruth, you have any ideas for what you'd like to do? Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of faffing about with this Daisy Man that makes me think like it's not too serious for people. So Mother Ruth's going to go and handle things herself. Very big Thanos energy. Ah, oh, I love um, that. Yeah. Fine, she'll um, do it herself. Very good. Fine, she'll do it herself. So going to make uh, her way down Santa Fe Street uh, and see if there are... This is the... This is the, 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 the the best place we must be like jesus christ ourselves and make our way through the dens of iniquity uh and sin and so uh let's go check with the sex workers and see what they had to say about the daisy men good to know what about graves what's graves interested in doing 
I mean, I got three conditions, but I am more interested in getting rid of this ghost be gone motherfucker. Mm, that's Uh, right, yeah. it, it's personal now. And what about Marshall Harrington? <laughs> I think that Marshall Harrington is... I would request a vulnerable scene with uh, Arkansas. Because, like, we haven't had one, really. The problem is, um, because he's uh, he's he's an honorary cuss, is that uh, you can't invite me, but I can invite you, and I, I know Oh. exactly, I know exactly how I can invite you. Mm. Well, since we uh, left the, the 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 thread hanging after Arkansas's morning at the banks of the river, how does this ornery motherfucker approach the marshal? I I think uh, he's just he's setting he can't throw up anymore. He's thrown everything up because I think it's a few days later. He's he can't throw up anymore, but he's still in pain. And so outside of town, up on the uh, up on the blank up on the banks of the ridge with the town behind him, I think he's just like shooting up in the air, you know. Um, um, each time a cramp comes through, you know, he'll like he'll he'll fire off a shot, and he'll breathe easy. Um, and um, and I think that's why the marshal will be like, "Who's shooting over there?" But I think I love the idea. It just it, they're accompanied and punctuated by just groans. It'd be like, <laughs> ah, bam. <laughs> they're like, they're like, they're, yeah, like then like six seconds later, oh, bam. <laughs> yeah, I think Marshall. It, oh, go ahead. Well, and 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 um, after that, if we have time. Um, yeah, I I could go to the I could go to Doctor Clarkson's too because I have like an existential crisis that I'm working on. That maybe he could help as a professional. But if we have time. Yeah, I love it. Good to know. Well, then go ahead. Yep. Set the scene and play in it. I think the marshal is coming up the, the ridge, uh, sighing as like with every single goddamn gunshot. Uh, yeah. Arkansas. What on earth are you doing? Helping with the pain, Marshal. Couple with the pain, and I only got seven bullets left. Uh. Firing your gun helps with the pain. I, I need... mean, like it, it, on some level. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't. I don't understand you uh, quite a bit at all. Honestly, I, I understand. I understand you pretty good, Marshall. Though, so well, that makes up for it. Mm -hmm. What are we, Arkansas? I'm pretty near sure I'm a ghost, uh, and you, you're a wanted man. They're gonna, they're gonna string you up if you don't sort this out, Marshall. Half, half true. I don't think you're a ghost. I don't think ghosts get cramps. Well, when they drink, ghosts be gone, though. I can almost see through my stomach. I can assure you, I cannot see through your stomach, so I don't think you're a ghost. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but getting back to what I actually mean, it, like... Uh. Like, what are you to me in terms of the committee? Because, well, because Ruth has her role as the spiritual guide. Graves is, Graves keeps our secrets. What about you? I was under the impression, Marshall, that I was in charge of this uh, vigilance committee. So I would be your direct supervisor. Uh, I have to read the guidelines, but that's what that was. That, that's the way it was spun to me, which puts you as uh, um, your role would be just off the top of my head would be bullet refiller or jail keeper. I mean. I'm not, my supervisory style is is uh, I like to give my I like to give my staff a lot of free reign, show some initiative, 
Don't get hung. Honestly, I would be more co concerned about you get yourself getting hung. More, closer to hung over, really. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. But <sighs> I'm starting to believe that even if you hung me, I'd still be have a bellyache. Probably. On account of I think I'm dead. No. Yeah. Have you drunk any Ghost Be Gone? Let me ask you this. Have you have you drank any of this Ghost Be Gone? No, I haven't. I, I, do you have any Ghost Be Gone on you? I'll drink as, it myself. As a matter of fact, I don't. <laughs> because no, you I, drank it all? Oh. I did, but I was doing, uh, I was uh, investigating. Um, trying to figure out the ingredients of this elixir that's going so fast. Have you heard mm. of other people struggling? Uh, no, because I was under the impression that it was more of an oil that you spread on things and not drink them. What? <laughs> hey, that, that, that kind of makes sense now that you say it, because it, it does taste like a, like a salve. We did actually see Dr. Clarkson like drink it like in his demonstration, to be fair, to at least I, Arkansas. I, 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 to be fair, Harrington did not see that and he's trying to like get like Arkansas to admit that he's wrong about drinking the No, you, you did see this because it was the introduction where you all oh. witnessed uh, his first arrival in town. Yeah. Well, Air well Harrington is just lying. Stay, stay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that checks out. <laughs> I'm not going to drink anymore. That's for, that's for sure. I might mm -hmm. fade away and I got things to do in mm -hmm. this mortal realm amongst you mortals before I head on to the pearly gates mm -hmm. or the slightly tarnished gates, whichever they may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How about this? And like, I think, uh, Andrew Harrington, like pulls out this, what looks like a kin of, a tin of candy. How about this? I'll give you one of these. And this should make you feel at least a little bit better. Uh, there. This is sort of a... a sort of a spiritual reconnection. It should get rid of the ghost beyond gone stuff. That right there is what's wrong with civilization, Marshall. If you rely upon these hocus-pocus pills... It, which take away the beneficent humors. It's a it's a known fact. Well, uh, you, that, what, that, that right there is the problem with society. No, thank you, Andrew. I pass. Well, to be fair, you drank Ghost Be Gone. I think that already messed up with your humors. Trying to counteract that with this stuff should help. But do not make me try to wrestle you, you to put this in your mouth. I I'm really, not eating that. Really... Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's something that you city fellers uh, eat, not, not the... I, I just need to find the right grass and then I'll be okay. It's it usually grows around rocks and things. There's rocks everywhere. I'm looking. Just give me some time, Marshall. Yeah, I got some things to do. I, I gotta find that <laughs> I gotta find that uh, coward Jim McKinley. <laughs> I think we'll cut away. I'll let you you think about what you'll get away from that scene. But we'll... uh, definitely a clue. So okay, I'll, gotcha. I'll ask the Marshall question. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, then, uh, what conditions are we clearing here? I mean, summit cramps, obviously, for you. Uh, and then, are you? Do you think this clears jumping at shadows? I just like to hear how you think this would do I, that. I I look at Arkansas because uh -huh. he is a bad reflection of myself. Uh, because this could be a path where I take down later if I continue to be so nervous about like everything around me. Literally, I think Arkansas is jumping at shadows. So mm -hmm. I like that. That's good. Mother Ruth, meanwhile, walking down Santa Fe Street. I'm going to pull my advanced keeper technique of use locations from other threats entirely for the sake mm -hmm. of this and... Have you visit the uh, the boarding house with the blue tin roof where Arkansas uh, t stays? Um, prostitution is not illegal in El Paso, but even so, the brothel operates under the front of a boarding home for women. Um, 
It is this large two-story farmhouse that has converted the carriage house into more rooms for its women. You would know this probably pretty well, Ruth Calvo, be an ear to the ground on matters of sin and vice and all that. Um, that's the most prominent sex worker hub that you can immediately think of. Um, and since you wanted to speak with the sex workers, I mean, yeah, we see you probably enter free and easy. I mean, Jackson, the handyman, is this large guy. He's like over six foot six, graying hair, thick, bushy beard. His left arm, he lost in the war. Um, he's just in his leather apron, um, chopping, you know, just logs out front of of the old farmhouse, just swinging them down like hard with an ax that just like thickly cuts through and has like a little pile that growing near him. He just kind of like looks at you and just gives you like a slight nod, um, wiping the sweat from his brow. Otherwise lets you walk inside to speak with the various women or even the proprietor, depending on how you want to go about this. But you've come to speak with the uh, with the sex workers. And well, this this is a reputable hub and also a place that gives shelter to one of the vigilance committee's own. So what better place to start? What do you do, Ruth? You're muted. Yeah, is the uh is the the matron about, or is it, a, is, is it a is it a pa is it a oh it's a dog? it is a matron Miss okay. Fran Walsh the brothel madam she's in you know her late forties I think so a bit so younger than you I imagine um if I'm going off if going off your picture is anything um uh her hair is dyed this bright orange color. She's dressed in very tight green, you know, fashion that covers most of her skin, but is still somehow quite revealing. Um, and you know that she never admits that she, this is a brothel. This is a, a boarding house for, um, for, for, for like, abandoned women. women. Doyle's Oh, dubs. abandoned women. Oh, yeah. Women of the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. Um... And yeah, I mean, you, you can find her. I think we see her just kind of in a little uh, living room area of the townhouse, uh, just currently going over some, some, some books and whatnot as she's sipping uh, from a, a, a glass of tea. Um, and she looks up at you. I, I, I think her hair is just so bright orange you know, curly, almost, I imagine like almost has a bit of that, like that, like Marge Simpson thing going on. So it's like, just like this like column of like orange hair that kind of comes off of her slightly. Um, she's drinking her tea and she goes, well, Mother Ruth Calvo, I'm so pick tickled to see you in my, my quaint little boarding house. I, is someone requesting a home service this morning? Sips her tea. Pleasure to meet you. Seeing you again. Haven't been seen around the church lately. Well, I mean, there is no church in El Paso, unless, of course, you're referring to your delightfully quaint tent at the edge of the town, which I admit, sometimes the dust is just particularly kicked up, and I would hate to sully not just the repute of such an establishment of holy sacrament, but also to affect my makeup, and that dust does affect my lungs quite, quite debilitatingly so. Interesting. I was can just I here. You? I was just here to speak with some of your tenant tenants. There was reports of them seeing a uh, man walking through walls, and I wanted to get a good, clean idea about what was going on. Was there now all this talk of phantom burglaries? Well, I'll have you know that we have had no such occurrences or robberies here at the Blue Tin Roof, but I do suppose, given all that you do for the community and for my wayward women, I suppose you can speak with them, but please be tactful. Some of my girls are so dreadfully tired and in need of their rest. When she smiles, she has a little gap tooth. Okay. Eloquent lips are unsuited to a godless fool. How much uh how much worse lying lips to a ruler. 
<laughs> indeed, indeed. She nods, smiling as if you did not just insult. She did, fully does not know you just basically insulted her. Does not catch mm -hmm. that whatsoever. She mm -hmm. is not a woman of wit. Um, and she just nods, and says, "Amen, mother. Amen." <laughs> Amen. Uh, but yeah, uh, you go ahead. Did, did you find yourself uh, frequent in Santa Fe Street? Uh, the the different areas about the halls and the saloons. Well, Maybe perhaps the... you've noticed a man. Well, not the halls and saloons, though I do have many friends of the nouveau riche who have been taken to the nice homes of Santa Fe Street who have dreadfully been robbed of late. I told them that they better be more secure in their belongings and such flaunted displays of their new gained wealth would only lead to trouble. Now, I did not anticipate that such trouble would come in the form of a man who walks through walls and takes them of their belongings, but I do suppose, you know... Caution is more necessary than ever. That is what the Vigilance Committee spouts, is it not? You know, I've been hearing so many dreadful little rumors about the Marshal Harrington. Ah, yes, the rumors about Harrington. Is he, as most people are saying, is he a, is he a sinner like a true and evil sinner, as the rumors purport, in your professional opinion, Mother Calvo? In my professional opinion, I believe that we should listen to what the good word says there, which is Ephesians 4, the uh, verse 29 states, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And I think that maybe if we spent a lot more time speaking about the good that folks are doing, as opposed to the bad that surrounds them 10 or 20 years previous, then maybe we wouldn't be have such problems as men walking through walls and stealing things from people now, would we? Hmm. Very eloquently put, Mother Calvo. Very eloquently put. She sips her tea. She does say, well, all this to say... I'd be happy to give you the names of some of my friends who have been robbed, their homes on Santa Fe and such not. Uh, if you want to, you know, I think you should go meet with Mercedes Pastor. She's a close friend, and her house was robbed. But I wish I could tell you more. Feel free to speak to my girls, though. Maybe they've seen, they've been working up and down various little odd jobs, you know, taking on the important hard labors that befit their destitution perhaps they may have seen or heard something interesting i wish i could be of more help though you've already helped so much i shall be speaking to mercedes next and also goes ahead and pulls out a pocketbook consider this a donation from the church a charitable giving back to the community uh, i'm going to place a 20 dollar bill uh on the table and say Make sure that gets to the girls and make sure they be able to take Sundays off for a little bit. She balks at the incredible display of wealth with that. Um, uh, and her her teacup like dro like droops slightly. And a little like a bit of it spills out onto the, the floor and she has to catch herself. Um, she tucks it away into her uh into her uh you know, little belt pocket. Um and wordlessly yeah i know you get the last word on that one and, and just turn just just gonna turn and smile you speaking with any of the uh with any of the girls yeah mercedes pastor oh no mercedes yeah. pastor is one of the friends uh who was robbed one of the uh down, oh. like, one of the nouveau riche type of yeah. people and yeah but yeah i mean yeah, yeah, I'll, so, mm -hmm. I'll go down and speak i'll go down and speak to gotcha. uh to, to, to some, so some of the, the boarders the yeah i yeah. mean some of the girls around kate mccabe uh, louise caldwell and finn savannah grant ellen clancy they're kind of around and about um mm -hmm. i think just kind of like montage of you speaking with them why don't you go ahead and uh roll the information move plus presence no perfect. disadvantage perfect uh now uh that that act would that be considered a kind and generous act that i just performed? oh 100 percent. okay a charitable act. Okay, you can perfect. mark, you can, yeah, absolutely charitable. You can mark a box on, but not forgotten. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. And I'll go ahead and I'll roll the information move with. Yes, ma'am. What? Uh, fucking dice. Jesus Christ. This is why you should never go to conventions, people. You pack things up that you need and then you don't remove them because you're like, ah, I'm so tired. And people talk too loud and get on my nerves. And then 
then you end up having to roll them and you're not prepared. And now you're now everybody's looking at you and she's, God damn it. I had to have eight whiskey sours last night. Couldn't couldn't have stopped at three or four. Had to have all eight. Okay, that's not so bad. Um, that is a four plus a, it's a seven. What would you say that was plus? Presence. Presence? Okay, two. Uh so that's a nine. Nine. All right. Let's see here. Oh, you a clue for the daisy man with a complication. You know, the various, this is not, this is going to be, I'm going to give you a lowercase C and then a capital C clue, you know, mm -hmm. um, the lowercase C clue is just going to be, you know, kind of like talking with the various girls telling you about like, you know, they, they, you know, they've, they've, you know, worked with some, uh, gentlemen recently in some of the various, uh, gambling halls and whatnot. Um, though, they haven't personally experienced any robbings. They do knew they do know that uh, some of them do know Bernice Williams, who is a saloon girl that works at the Rio Grande Gambling Saloon. Uh, she's not a sex worker, but she, you know, some of the girls here know her. Um, she she has some experiences as well. Um, you know, so you hear a little bit of rumors about that. Obviously, um, rumors about some of the like their own clients the people that they've you know that they've met with have been some of the similarly new money kind of people of el paso that have been robbed um but other than that they don't really have any other stories to share although in your chat um with with these women here's your capital c clue so one of them shares with you because you're 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 a, a a woman of the cloth. You're a you're a religious woman telling stories from the Bible and whatnot. And I'm not quite sure how this would come up in conversation, so I'm not going to quite fit it into like role play text. But just in those exchanges of speaking with the girls, maybe saying a Bible verse or two, as you are wont to do in various conversations. One of them does interject in there. Um, I don't think it's a Bible story, it's just like a story that like comes to mind that you know that maybe this whole situation reminds her of, or just something that she idly mentions as an afterthought. But it is a story about a legendary thief on the run from the devil. That's your capital C clue. Your complication. Take a look here. Yeah, simply put, Mother Ruth, how do you feel? Uh, I would say I would typically feel a bit icky. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'm going to mark a uh, I'm going to mark a mask of the past. Oh, uh, and I can you. do it right now. Um. Narrate a flashback describing the last time you tr you truly you felt truly blessed. Um, we see a collection of people, M Ruth, a young Ruth Calvo, uh, around the same age that we saw during um, the uh, during the whole. Uh, I also need to, I need to narrate another mask of the past too, uh, but I'll go ahead and do that later. Uh, uh, but narrate a flash. Uh, last time I truly felt blessed. We see Ruth like talking to these women who, who, who truly do hard work uh, during this time, especially during a time when it was not appreciated for what it was. Um, still isn't in my opinion, but still uh, she's, she's listening to them and talking with them and like taking in all of their stories and we just see a, a, a momentary flash of her younger, uh, about 25. Um, after everything that she's experienced in Holland uh, and a lot of the with the reformation of the Dutch uh, Reformed Church and everything, uh, a lot of the things that she witnessed that changed her and changed her faith and pushed her. But now that's changing because her and her husband and, and the rest of her people 
are all making their way to the new world, uh, which is a, a a land of opportunity of milk and honey. Uh, this 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 time being uh, the 1850s, and there being so much westward expansion and the gold rush and everything. And we see oxen and sheep and chickens and goats being loaded into crates on board a steamer ship, this like wooden steamer, like the like galleon steamer ship. Uh, that's like, it's this weird amalgamation of two things. And inside her mind, she's feeling that that's what she is. She's this, this, this woman of like, of, of extreme traditional faith, but also is this woman that's moving forward and taking in progress as much as she can. And she can hear birds overhead and she's never been to a place like France before and meeting all these people. And she's speaking to courtesans and everything. She's doing exactly what Jesus does and tells you to lay with sinners and speak to them and learn their stories and help. And she's growing her flock. And you can see that there are more and more people joining this group of hers that's making their way across the sea and they're all wearing like white like button up shirts some of them the women have their hair up in bonnets there's a lot of black uh like pants or black dresses being worn and they all have like this this piousness about them and they they just there there feels like a community that's growing and the closer she gets to her goal out west the, the the more her flock grows and even through the hardships of sailing through across the north atlantic ocean and, and where things almost got a bit dicey and there was almost a wreckage and and an almost interaction with the iceberg but her faith never faltered and the faith of her people never faltered and then she saw it this this wide city filled with expanse teams of people living on top of each other. She's heard the plight of the Irish and the Italians and of her own people, but she knows that her goal is not here. Though she will come back to the city one day, her goal is not here. It is further west to spread the message. And we just see that kind of light dim as we come back to Mother Ruth this time. And this feelings that she might have of like ickiness towards these women who do something that might be considered a sin towards anybody, she swallows it deep down and she listens and she prays for them. Beautiful. I like the idea that now we'll cut away to Graves, who is interested in doing some stuff with dr clarkson is this what are we thinking is this more of a direct confrontation or subtly doing different things in the background well i had a the clue with the complication was actually spotting something of interest in the wagon ah, that needed follow yes. up right. so i'm following up that's right you can similarly head to the warehouse of the northern edge of el paso where that wagon is stored uh, being watched after by Mr. Harry Etheridge, the watchman. Obviously, Mother Ruth was let in uh, by means of just chatting Harry Etheridge's ear off about it. Um, but I don't think I have that kind of power. don't have that kind of power. That's super <laughs> fine. But I will ask you then, um, since you're looking to get to that wagon, how do you go? What do you want to do? Is there a, uh, more than one door to this warehouse? Uh, no, there's just the one guarded mm. door. Mm -hmm. Where there might does... be some, I watch you. Well, that's not true. There, doors wise, yes, but I imagine that this warehouse does have windows, okay, or at least openings. It's, 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 you know, it's not like it's a, a big city warehouse. I imagine it's more of kind of a following the tradition of like, um, like a barn kind of warehouse. So there are like, okay. you know, like slots like on the far upper reaches, though, that are. Not accessible by normal means, but yeah. Okay. That it's it's so if those are not like fully accessible, where does Dr. Clarkson stay? That's a very he's... good question. Um I uh you don't actually have an address for where he's staying. Um, you know that he kind of is seen out and about. Um, he keeps his wagon here. You don't know if he sleeps here. You have okay. thus far had no clear indicators as to where this man spends. Cause I mean, at night times he's out on the street selling his product. So wherever he's resting, you, you have yet to hear about it. Okay. This is a, this is buck wild. What I'm about to say. Um, 
I'm not going to kill anyone. I just want to preface that we're not going to kill a guy uh, unless we have to. But I do have like a raven that follows me around. And I imagine that is a a pretty distracting thing. So either there are two ways and I will let Alex decide what is more feasible is can I get this raven to go in and retrieve something for me from the wagon? Because your death? Yes. Fuck you, yes. You are okay. literally you are literally the reaper. You if if anyone in this group <laughs> can command a raven to go fetch something for you, it's going to be the literal avatar of death. Fuck yes. Okay, then I'm going to go have my instead of climbing through a window like a little gremlin and getting 100% seen by other people in the town because it is midday. I'm going to have my bird do it. I'm going to whisper something in a completely unknown language to this bird and go ask it to go uh, fetch whatever I saw. Uh, simply because <laughs> I think that idea fucks so hard. I'm just going to, there's no role. I'm just going to give you the clue that what? I owe you. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. I mean, like, listen. I'll mark, I can, I'll mark the bird no, and we can call. No, no, do not mark the bird. You're not, you're not using it for a die roll. You just have the raven, you know, just like, okay. I think that fictionally that just checks out. Like these, these, <laughs> these kind of warehouses don't have like windows on them. They're like barn, you know, things. It's very easy for a bird to fly through a window and it's a bird that you are commanding it just works it yeah. just okay works. sick i won't question it fuck yeah sometimes ideas are just good enough that i'm like you don't need a die roll for that all uh, right so what's my me, bird find what, your bird, <laughs> what does your bird find let me look at my because <laughs> i said all i said was something kept caught your eyes let me tell you what that is um ba -ba 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 -bum. <laughs> Something that now, well, that yeah, now it reasonably is something to be, uh, it has to be something that reasonably a raven could carry back. <laughs> so I am, I am You're welcome. Oh, you're good. <laughs> um, all right, I got it. Yeah. It's, um, let me see this real quick. It's, um, a small, leather valise case um but it's, it's like you know small enough for a, a bird to carry mm -hmm. not like the actual like normal briefcase size about like maybe like a, a third of that more of like a like a kind of like a handbag kind of thing i guess you could call it uh, the reason it caught your eye was just because it had a particularly um like nice little like um like pure silver class that caught the light interestingly that's not your clue but the clue is what's inside of it <laughs> okay um, so it, it carries that to you and that was kind of like jetting out, like piled under some of uh, stuff on the wagon. Like he had like tucked it away. Like it wasn't in a place of like, this is where it belongs. This is of like a, I need somewhere to shove this. And let me just, you know, put this here or right there. Um, when the raven flies back and delivers the bag, uh, inside are little small pouches of like metallic powders, like labeled as like, you know, iron, nickel, um, you know, sulfur, you know, stuff like that. Um, a, you know, a little miniature chemical testing kit in there. So you got some like okay. the, the, the samples, the strips, the bottles, and just a couple of like small glass beakers in there as well. Um, very curious that he has some sort of, that that's your actual clue, that collection of stuff. Um, and because you're deaf and you have some kind of weird supernatural vibe, <laughs> Just doing shit with a with a bird. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I don't know about chemistry, but I know about magic. Yeah, I like this is very chemistry oriented, but I just like in in a very like hunch kind of way. What about this clue makes you think that there's a uh, some kind of secret inside the warehouse itself? Like there's like something. Like, like a secret. All I'm gonna say is there's a secret in there, like some kind of like just like I guess the way to phrase this is just like what about this kind of is is helping that hunch of like there's something in that warehouse that I that that 
Dr. Clarkson doesn't want to be found and it's not the wagon. I think there's like two parts to this. One, these metallic powders. I, I don't even know if Graves recognizes it as a chemistry kit, but a lot of these various powders are like pure silver, like really finely ground salt. It's all of these things that would register as having like a secondary sort of protective property. And also it's the how quickly the bird went in and out, like it didn't want to stay. And it seems to be ruffled by this place. I like that. So as the raven lands at your feet, drops at you, are picking through it, you're contemplating, thinking through things, what do you do now? Um, I think I pocket it and I'm going to go find Dr. Clarkson. You know, I'm going to go ask person. around if we can, but uh, definitely, <laughs> yes, the Raven does have a condition now. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go do. I'm going to go see if I can find where he's staying. Um, see if he's hiding anything where he's at. Because I don't want to go into that warehouse during the day. I feel like that's a bad move considering the PR that we've gotten that I have definitely not helped and Harrington hasn't helped. I don't think we need to escalate it. <laughs> Very good. Let's take a five minute break. I'm interested to hear what Marshall Harrington and Arkansas may want to do for the remainder of the day phase. Uh, I, too, uh, wants to talk to Dr. Clarkson. That's where, I'm, yeah, I think we can, unless you guys want to spread it, spread the love. Oh, do I, all three of you want to go so, uh, find Dr. Clarkson? <laughs> yeah? That's, I, I, just, I love the idea. I love the two of you of, like, Graves walking through the town and then just kind of can see Marshall and Marshall Harrington in Arkansas coming down the way as well. And the three of you can convene and decide to do the same course of action. <laughs> So yeah, let's get that scene first of all. Let's get that the, that you meet in the middle of you know walking down Santa Fe Street. There's the 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 three of you just kind of meet in the middle as passersby mm -hmm. are moving around you. Um, we see. Let me look at my list of specific ghost be gone moments <sighs> because I have a little countdown list for these. Yeah, you can see that a dance hall is advertising a promotional performance for Ghost Be Gone uh, involving scantily clad performers singing songs of heartbreak and chasing away ghostly former paramours with bottles of Ghost Be Gone. I think you both see Graves read this and just look so, like, more done than they usually do, just like... <sighs> And continues walking. And then I think it probably takes a second to realize you're heading the same way. Are we... Okay. Are we just all going the same place? Are we? I, I'm, I'm going to talk to Dr. Clarkson. He's a professional. He's something. Grace, how many bullets you got on you? I only got seven forty-fives left. Um, don't worry about that. Are I, you planning on wait? Are you planning on shooting Doctor Clarkson? He's the only. He's the only help this town has. There's no way to shoot that man. No, no. I I've a planned on sort of. Uh, I've been ruminating on things of what what I can do for the committee and whatnot. And sort of a plan of uh, ex exploiting the more, mm, let's see, uh, sort of the human aspect of it. Because, well, as long as I can get people to talk, well, that's something I'm good at. Are you too okay with this, this charlatan? You're, you're fine with him just sort of doing uh... all of this? I think there is an aspect of truth, uh, and but we need to get to the bottom of it because, well, he's just pretty much whipped this town into shape. Graves, this this makes it easier on us. 
I, Graves, I have, I'll be perfectly honest. This town does not care for me too much anymore. <laughs> I need. As someone, like, as he says that, it is punctuated by someone walking by and spitting at the marshal's feet. I've noticed. And Dr. Clarkson is favored by the town. So get into the good graces of Dr. Clarkson. You can, we can puppet him around a little bit. It's a little bit malicious, but this, these are trying this, times. This is, this is so overly complicated. All sure. you people always are. All right. Uh, I mean, you it's could. city living go. is what it is. This is city living, Graves. This is it's complicated. I think Graves does look around at sort of the desolate desert landscape <laughs> beyond El Paso when you say that, and looks back at you, and looks at Marshall Harrington. I mean, I, just there's the issue of the Daisy Man that you could investigate, Graves, because that's a little less complicated. You know what? I'll let you two talk to this man, but just know I don't think he's to be trusted. And I'll go do something else for now. Be careful. I think I'm actually going to transition us into the dusk and night, uh, and because gonna... because we have these these. These courses of actions between Graves and Mother Ruth and Arkansas and Andrew Harrington's various little actions you described to me, I'm like, you know what would be interesting? If we take these and put them into the night phase. Uh, oh! I mean, after all, the easiest place to find Dr. Clarkson is at night. And, uh, well, Daisy Man strikes at night as well. And maybe Mercedes Pastor is a busy woman. Who knows what her schedule is like? But first, let's get into the dusk phase. Marshall, are you hosting an assemblage tonight? Uh, no, because All I right. want a private conversation with... Gotcha. Uh... <laughs> Understandable. Let's paint the scene about the wounded knight. Let's talk about sickness during the wounded knight. Doc always has an extra remedy or two that is only prescribed during the wounded night. What strange remedy is paired to an odd affliction associated exclusively with the wounded knight? Andrew Harrington wasn't talking out of his ass when he was handing uh, effectively Arkansas these uh, little candies. They are sort of a uh, sort of a sort of a sweet type of thing, but they have like a sort of minty like aftertaste. Uh, typically, they are to get rid of what uh, Doc calls the ghost rumblies. Thankfully, for uh, Arkansas McGee, one of the one of the remedies is that people take less baths because uh, it washes away the beneficent humors. I think this is it's a little left field, a little little odd for the wounded knight, and there is this idea that maybe it's not even real, and it's this, you know, um, it, it's very. It's imagined, but there is this silver powder that you can get and sort of rub it on your pulse points. And it is supposed to keep the keep various forms of lycanthropy at bay. And Mother Calvo's, Calvo specifically takes grinded chicken feet with her tobacco. Because at 3 p.m., her and much of the other women in town develop a weird, strange case of the hiccups. Fascinating and medically terrible. I love it. Do 
we want to answer any questions? I figure the answer is no, but I ask because, I mean, technically the option, the available options you'd have to answer, you can do them just right now only with penalties, um, with the exception of uh, the first question on Ghost Be Gone. Um, if you just want to fucking kill Dr. Clarkson, that one would be done with a plus one. But uh, the question on the Daisy Man can be done with a minus two. Uh, other questions on the Ghost Beyond would be done with a minus. The Bounty Hunter would also be done with a minus one. So unless we, I mean, again, I will say, if we feel like resolving any threats or or doing anything whatsoever, well, you're welcome to roll with penalties. I mean, it could be fun, but again, if unless it's it's your call, your call. Hmm. What do we feel, gang? I I kind of liked it with Doctor Clarkson, but it it'll be too it'll be negative three, I think, if we're going for the the top negative three. If you're going for the top one, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's negative three. Negative yeah. three. Yeah, that's not good. I'll let someone else make that call. Um. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's let y'all are all three going to dr clarkson right now to beat his two ass of right two, two of them i'm gonna I, i'm letting harrington okay. arkansas do it i, I think y'all are capable of doing some detective work so we can at least bring that up to like a minus one yes. or at least rolling even please i beg if not then we might be discussing what good graves is at being a, uh, <laughs> a, 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 a an avatar of death uh we, yeah we might be taking a different route <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think we can knock it out because like the Daisy Man, I, I I'm focusing on the Daisy Man as mm -hmm. well. So I think if we hit it hard, we can get these to a much manageable two to become mm -hmm. three for the next day phase. Very if, true. If, if we if we take care of this, yeah. Uh, of course, Alex is known for some fuck shit. So I'm always known for fuck shit. Do we want to? Uh, and what about the bounty hunter? Do that with a minus one, or keep that on the table and get more clues for that? Uh, keep it on the table for now. All right, more dangers for me to fuck you guys with later. Very yeah. good. Love to see it. All Ugh. right. Then in that case, we know Mother Ruth. Uh, I, my assumption is your previously stated actions will be what you're doing during the night phase, but you're welcome to change course. Mother Ruth, you still intend to pay a visit to Mercedes uh, Pastor? All right. Evening visit. Graves, you intended. To, what do you intend to do? I know it involves the Daisy Man in some way, but yes. what is your plan for the night? Um, I want to. So there's. I don't think the bank. Like, is the bank still like slated to be robbed, or has that already happened? It hasn't been robbed yet. Tonight might be the night. Yeah, I think that, and also keeping an eye out for where. God, what was that guy's with a bag? The one that I definitely killed a dude Clarence in front O'Toole. of. Clarence O'Toole. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see where Barry, he you is. You didn't kill the dude. The dude killed himself. Listen. You know details. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that I'm, I might see what he's up to because I'm suspicious. Uh, but yeah, and if I can keep an eye on the bank, so be it. Interesting. And then we have Harrington and Arkansas going to pay a visit to Doctor Clarkson and his Ghost Be Gone wagon. Do we have any lingering Janus mass prompts that need to be narrated still? Yes. Would you like to do yours now? Absolutely. Go for it. Uh, I think uh, we see Mother Calvo, who's like riding high off of like spending time with, you know, with amongst people and trying to be a better person and everything. Um, and we have that we had that, that her that memory of like that joy and everything. But uh, as she's walking through the streets and she's about to meet with Mercedes past, we see her stop and she lurches. She shakes her head. And as the, the sun was starting to set in that brilliant, you know, purples and blues and yellows streaking and turning to oranges and like and deep velvets across the sky, um, we see the camera flip like flips to pure black, except you can see that there are torches lighting. And then there's a flare up of flame. And then you see that a tent catches on fire, and then more. And then you start hearing screaming, sounds of confusion, and some clanging, as we see those tents from that earlier vision of her spitting water on her different people, joining her flock and everything, trying to, 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 to press into the Holy Spirit, into the brow of these people. We see uh, that there are other 
Dutch farmers. They are not dressed in the ways of Mother Ruth's flock. Uh, they wear more bright clothing, more open clothing. Uh, and they are currently beating some of her flock with uh, axe handles. They are making their way through um, through and dragging people out of their tents and beating them and taking them and throwing them into the nearby river. Uh, such violent against people that only want to see people move on to their 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 ultimate reward, their their immortal reward. Uh, Ruth is dragged awake by a group of these townspeople. Uh, confused, her blonde hair and curled ringlets. Uh, you can hear in Dutch them saying, "This is the one. This is the one that's been 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 leading them." Um. And she can't meet their gaze. She can't look upon them because she she knows that they're just people and they're just confused. And as as they're preparing to to, to beat her with axe handles, she's praying to the Lord to intervene to show them the errors of their ways. And then a shot rings out, and we see one of them clutch their chest and fall to the ground as blood spreads. And we see Ruth's husband, uh, Tomas is standing with a pistol uh and he has his arms big strong arms around one of these it seems like an elderly gentleman that was leading these people with the axe handles and he pulls the gun to his side and touches the barrel against his teeth his cheek and you hear like a singe and he says in Dutch, if there's any one of you that wants to take another swing at one of our people, our good people, then you can count this man amongst the dead. So gather yourselves and go back home, or there shall be more bloodshed. And the people look confused, the people standing around Ruth. And they start a string of curses in Dutch, but they, they step away, they move away, they let the people go. And you can hear crying, people recovering their things, starting to pack in the night. And Tomas makes his way over to Ruth and gathers her up. And when he looks at her face, she's not crying, she's not sad, she's angry. She's mad. And she's filled with such religious fervor that she understands that the only way that they're going to be able to have their mission spread amongst the people is to spread it from a place where there's more fertile ground. The ground has been tilled here. It's been tilled to death. There's nothing new in Holland. But they can make something more. And then she shakes her head, comes back, and we just see the streets of El Paso as a person passes by and says, You okay there, Mother Calvo? She goes, I'm fine, I'm fine, no need to worry about me. She starts walking towards Mercedes' place. Our unseen for this evening is called The Short Straw. They say Deputy Calhoun has no luck whatsoever. Once again, he has drawn the short straw, meaning tonight he gets to guard the jail, do the night round, and kill time with solitaire to stay awake. I'm going to give the first prompt to Daniel. Second prompt to B. Third to Chaotic. And the last one to Wes. We're going to take another 10 minute break. And that was so soon after our previous break, but to think about your unseen prompts and think about your upcoming night phase scenes. Before we do, I, I will preface with this as we move into the night phase, because Ghost Begun is active and a new night phase has started. I must announce something. A side character is now dead because Ghost Be Gone failed to protect them. And this will happen every night phase. I will choose a side character who is now dead. In this case, it's Mercedes Pastor. What? So Mother Ruth is gonna show up to a dead woman's house. And all that entails. 
I'll see you guys soon. Seduction of Dr. Clarkson. <laughs> We're going back in now. Let's play. The Seduction of Dr. Clarkson. The sedu- yeah, in big Western font. Bam! <laughs> the Seduction of Dr. Clarkson. <laughs> but before we get to that, let's begin with the unseen. Daniel, whenever you're ready. Calhoun stinks at cards. It's Deputy Calhoun who drew the short straw. He he stinks at cards even when he's playing uh, by himself. He blames it on the snoring prisoner that keeps breaking his concentration. What does he do to wake the sleeping prisoner uh, before leaving on his evening rounds? He we see we see Calhoun stand up, and um, he uh, uh, he's just irritated. He 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 shoves he, he wipes the cards into a desk drawer, and he walks back to where the 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 jail cell is and he's looking at the guy sleeping and then he takes a huge deep breath and puts two fingers in his mouth and does this really loud whistle um and when the guy's startled up he says now go back to sleep crowd is gathered as is usual arkansas and graves Mechanically, you must now take the condition marked by the grifter. But otherwise... Why, why me? Not Graves. Sorry, not Graves. Sorry, I meant to say... I said, I meant to say Marshall Harrington. I was like, because I'll take it, but I got to mark a mask, but yes. No, sorry. Marshall Harrington is what I meant to say. Um, We see Dr. Clarkson stepped up on his little, his little apple box proclaiming while the local boy, Henry Short, is spouting from his uh from his bugle and occasionally echoing chants probably being paid some some simple money to to be um a little a little crier for for dr clarkson um but as you two come like sauntering up to the crowd there's a a bit of a hush that falls over because people are eyeing marshall harrington but Dr. Clarkson, beaming as ever, says, Well, if it isn't the fair marshal of El Paso Township, accompanied by Wild West legend Arkansas McGee, a round of applause, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Tell me, Mr. McGee, care to share a story or two from your time with the famous Blackheart Vermilion, or have you forgotten that in a slurry of alcohol? Along no, with how I to bathe yourself. One. I got a good one for you. Listen to this, folks. Um... I had some of this uh, ghost be gone, and it reminded me of this ghost story that I heard out there on the range. And it's where, uh, and I don't know if this is your secret sauce, Dr. Clarkson, but uh, but the story goes that if you can capture a ghost in a bottle, you can make it do your bidding. I'm going to cut that as a clue from my- uh, Oh my God, incredible. (laughs) That's really fucking funny. (laughs) <laughs> There's an almost like confused murmur that runs through the crowd before Dr. Clarkson just kind of says, Indeed. Well, come on up then, Vigilance Committee. A word or two to share with your dedicated townsfolk. After all, times being what they are, it's important to stay vigilant and stay protected. Let's cut away. Well, for, for, for this and for this now, we'll jump over elsewhere. Mother Ruth who is going to enter the townhouse of Mercedes Pastor. Um, Tell us, Mother Ruth, how have you readied yourself for this this nightly uh, house visit before? And I guess I I actually I'll have you set the scene because and then and then how you discover the current state of Mercedes Calvo or Mercedes Pastor's uh, death. I'll let you kind of set the scene. Yeah, I think uh, now that it's nighttime and everything, uh, Mother Ruth, uh, typically when she moves about during the day, uh, she she wears all black and everything, very like staunch, very stoic, moves, almost glides across the street and everything. It's nighttime. She moves a little bit more at ease. Um, I started brandishing her crucifix a little bit more, obviously, uh, and is now wearing a... Um, uh, a, a a a a bit of a a headdress uh just putting a, a nice simple piece of um of silk over her hair and everything to kind of keep it back out of her eyes uh and uh has brought with her a um a a small basket of food 
uh, to Mercedes. Uh, probably times being what they are, as Dr. Clarkson says, you know, it's always nice to help out your neighbor and just goes and raps on the door. The door is slightly ajar as it pushes in at your knock. And as you glance inside, you see a pale hand lying on the floor. And we cut away. Graves, you intended to follow or keep eyes on Clarence O'Toole and the bank tonight, is that right? Absolutely. We see you stationed out there on Santa Fe Street. One eye on the Rio Grande Gambling Saloon. Well, actually, in this case, I think it'll be the Golden Spur. No, we haven't done anything with the Golden Spur yet. The small, private, exclusive gambling saloon where he, where Clarence O'Toole is tonight. You've got one eye there, and then one eye on the first bank of El Paso, further down the way. It's quiet over the rooftops. A cat nimbly jumps from roof to roof, its eyes just kind of focusing on you, watching you in particular as it continues along its way. What are you doing as you watch? I think I'm mostly focusing on watching the bank and watching the way the shadows move and listening for any commotion. I think it's a very sort of like no one outside of Graves's own head would see them doing anything. They are stock still, but they're watching to see which place has the most movement and which has this sort of like that otherworldly vibe that they're kind of attuned with. Very good. Let's go back to the unseen. So he stands up, irritated. Oh, wait, that's I was reading fucking Arkansas's thing. Wrong thing. We already did that. Walking down the street at night is peaceful, at least. He swings the lantern and sings a sprightly tune. What's the song about? And I think we hear him whistle first. He's a very good whistler. And then he starts humming it, and then he starts singing it. And it's a... Uh, Home on the Range, which is kind of a, it's a newer, more popular tune. And he keeps sort of doing the middle refrain because he can't remember the rest of the words. And it's just, there's no place like home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And kind of weaves in other songs about uh, a beautiful young woman that you know, lives there, this this sort of uh, ballad, these love ballads he's heard, he's mixing them all up, but he seems like he's, he's enjoying himself. But it all goes back to the refrain, there's no place like home. On well, the roof, as the door creaks open and you see sprawled out body. Let's paint the scene real quick. Where to go? Looking around, how did, do we know that Mercedes was a member of El Paso's nouveau riche, the newly rich, the new money? Can you repeat that? Looking around, how do we know that Mercedes Pastor was a member of El Paso's Nouveau Riche? Oh, um... The furniture is hand-me-down, but the clothes are new, newly made. Uh, and very uh, like, and the furniture is not exquisite. It's 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 old hand me down furniture, uh, but like the clothes are like newly made, newly bought, newly purchased. Very nice, uh, extravagant clothing. Was this open for everybody? 
we see that uh, that she has newspaper clippings about Alma Stockpool, who's the richest woman in uh, El Paso, who uh, owns the uh, the El Paso tin mine. And so uh, we see like she's been keeping like um, El Paso uh, newspaper clippings about Alma. The mail, even though it's been well organized and well kept, it's still quite a pile. She's been very, very busy. I think as you walk in, Mother Ruth, you see a music box on a stand. It is a beautiful, ornate music box, clearly ordered from a magazine from out east, and it is playing music still. And you think you recognize the tune. It's a popular song right now. Mother Ruth, what do you do? I'm going to feel out and just like stop and just kind of take in the whole area. Don't touch anything and see if the killer is still here. Hmm. Let me make the information move plus reason. It's a five and a six plus one. This segues very well into what I was going to do. I'll give you the mastermind clue first before we cut away. The killer's not still here. But there is a note left behind, addressed to you, Mother Ruth, left behind the crime scene. As you unfold it, all it says is get out of town before it is too late. Meanwhile, on Santa Fe Street, outside, Graves, watching from the nearby alleyway, you hear the cock of a gun, a hammer going back from the alley that you're kind of stationed in. You hear the quivering in the voice, the shaky hand that holds the pistol rattling slightly with its mechanics. Um, and the voice just hoarsely whispers out, what the fuck are you? And you can turn around and for a moment. You don't recognize this man, but then it clicks in. One of the other two unseemly sorts that accompany the gentleman that shot himself before. This is the one. This is the man who had gone pale, drawn a cross over himself, and fumbled out. His shaky hand pointing a revolver right at you, almost point blank, very close. His breath reeks of alcohol, but he is pale and sweating his eyes bloodshot like he has not been finding much peace in his indulgences he's pointing this gun at you he says almost again for emphasis what the fuck are you you unholy son of a bitch you you killed you killed my cousin I know I know you did something don't fucking lie to me <laughs> I've I've been told you is something unnatural. And as he's talking, Graves is moving so slowly, just slowly taking off a glove as if he's like getting ready to duel and just kind of putting them in his pocket and is like, let's put the gun down. He says, no, 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 don't fucking come near me. I saw what you did after you touched him. Uh, and like his gun, he like pushes the gun against you for emphasis. Uh, and he says, I know what you are. Oh, the man, the man with the man with the fucked up neck told me all about you. Um, I'm going to oh. have you roll the night move. 
Please do. Plus composure at disadvantage because the hanged man knows. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. What are you afraid of happening here? Hold on. Oh, yeah. Bef yes, okay. What am I afraid of happening here? I'm afraid he's going to shoot me point blank. Mm -hmm. And this, this, this fragile little vessel is just going to be destroyed. That is pretty bad. Any ideas, anyone, for how it's worse than that? Because I'm coming up blank on this. They, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Chaotic. Your scene will get interrupted. And because this man is so trigger happy right now, he will shoot an innocent person. Oh, yeah. I like that. That's great. That's oh, great. that's good. He's not going to shoot you. He's going to shoot someone else. Oh, yeah, Daniel. My option was that uh, this is a trap by the hangman. Mm. And somehow death gets captured by. Uh, oh, those are pretty delicious. I do just like the idea of like it's worse than that because just like there is something that's going to interrupt this and either cause more problems. So I'll leave it kind of openly vague because I like All both right. those options a lot. So disadvantage on the composure roll. Okay, we're gonna reroll that bad boy. That is a seven. Well, seven. S Meanwhile, elsewhere in El Paso. The two of you have approached Dr. Clarkson amidst the crowd. He's, mm -hmm. Do you approach him during the speech or do you wait for him to finish his general kind of proclamations and wait for the opening when like people are buying from his tent? I, I think I'm waiting until people are buying from his tent. And I shall, I'll go ahead, Arkansas. And I'm uh, I'm off task. I'm looking in the crowd. I'm taking an opportunity with this crowd and I'm looking for that coward Jim McKinley. Mm, interesting. <laughs> I like that a lot. Would make a lot of sense for him to start trying to get you know peruse some ghosts be gone. We'll start with Arkansas. They're sorry with uh, with uh, with Marshall. I mean to say, mm -hmm. you approach and he says, Marshall Andrew Harrington was it? Mm -hmm. A pleasure to formally meet you, good sir. Though I have to say, yes. I've been hearing a number of tawdry rumors about your past. None of them true, I take it. Oh, uh, none of them true. It's just mm -hmm. you know how uh, people in El Paso gets they. They hear any sort of rumors and they just spread it all around just to find some sort of comfort or semblance of normalcy in the, these trying times with ghosts and whatnot. I, speaking of which, I really need to have like a private conversation with you about this because, well, frankly, I've noticed how well you've been alchemating yourself here. Really? Is that so? For what purpose would we want to have a private conversation? What can be said in private that can't be said to the good people of El Paso? Uh, oh, well, sort of uh, developing personal relationships. It's uh, sort of a uh, sort of a uh, difficult to sort of like be on display all the time. I figured that I might as well get to know the man behind the bottle. I don't think this is, hmm. I was about to say, I don't think it's particularly risky, but I just had a, an idea for it. I'm going to make it the night move um, uh, because I have an idea. But uh, what are you afraid of happening? Should you I fail think, to persuade him? I think it, he's just going to get insulted by me because I, like, I'm implying that, uh, that uh, I, I want to, like, draw him away from, like, him selling his wares and interrupting his uh, bi business effectively. It's worse than that. It is worse than that because the overtures of asking him to, like, speak in private, the, the good people of El Paso, what is that no good marshal up to? Is he trying to handle the real savior of the people? What dark, nefarious deeds are you going to do with Dr. Clarkson, Marshal Harrington? Uh, you can roll... Plus your horizons. Mm -hmm. And because you're marked by the grifter. I think he's got his eyes on you. So I am going to give you disadvantage. Like it is like he's kind of like really got like a, a point on you. And yeah, it's hard to persuade the grifter. This is going to be a weird one. Okay, I'm listening. Uh. I do have like a sort of an envelope in my pocket that has a, 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 a sort of a good faith sort of argument here that I know that you probably do not want to, uh, to leave your card unattended, but Arkansas McGee, he's a notable legend and he is absolutely thrilled with what you've been doing here and would 
make sure that things are all right and you have your little uh, assistant there to make sure things are properly accounted for so there's no worry needs to worry but i do have uh, a little gift sort of just a uh, just for tit for tat of a uh, sort of some information about a password itself just to uh just uh you're just, giving uh, him the fucking love letter aren't you yeah The unsigned and unaddressed, beautifully composed love letter that's been in your inventory, is it, right? Okay. Yeah. Fucking wild. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling him what's in it, so No, like... I know. That's so good. All right, mark it and roll. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Ah, uh, that is a nine. Nine total? Nine total. All right. I have to ask. Is Marshall Andrew Harrington in any way attracted to Dr. Clarkson? Uh, like, Andrew Harrington, for as attractive as he is, it falls for people very easily. Okay. Uh, like so, it, this is this is how he ended up with both Ruth and I uh uh Bartholomew at one time. So because my complication, um, if you're cool with it, mm -hmm. I think it's just a smash cut to Andrew Harrington and um Jebediah Clarkson aggressively making out, like yes. in like a private space. Like a mm -hmm. pin against the wall. This is like this is almost like border hate fucking. Like mm -hmm. this is like you know it's it's like aggressive. Um, like slam mm -hmm. against the wall, like lip locked and all that. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. I'll tell you how that manifests as a complication. Um, in our next round, but that is mm -hmm. where the scene ends. Mm -hmm. Uh, incredible. And then uh, Arkansas, can you get a, a dice on the table for your keen eye? You can roll plus. Um. I could see composure as an argument for this just because you're concentrating on the crowd and focusing. Um, it's less of like reasoning out things. You're just keeping an eye. Uh, but you are hungover, so that would give you disadvantage. Okay. That gives me a six plus my uh, composure is one. It gives me a seven. Seven. All right. Let's go back to the unseen. Hohoon checks the doors of businesses as he walks past. What business does he find unlocked? And what rationalization uh, does he offer himself as he locks it back up with investigation? I think this is a sort of common grocery store and whatnot. And as like he sort of like is about to head inside, he hears a thump. And another thump against sort of the walls, and he just imagines himself sort of a, a midnight rendezvous, and he really shouldn't intrude upon that. And so he just closes the door and locks it back up. Back inside the apartment of Mercedes Pastor, as you stare at your note, Mother Calvo, what do you do? Oh, I, I do owe you another clue. I forgot about that word quick. Let me give you that extra clue. Um, for the Daisy Man. You see... The room is mostly undisturbed, other than finding this strange note behind. Um, there's not much here that points to a killer or what traces they left. However, you do notice that she was clutching in her pale, now rictus stiff hand, 
a handkerchief embroidered with a daisy pattern held in her death grip. That is the other clue you find. And I think we hear um, a voice from perhaps a neighbor calling up near the hallway, being like, Mercedes, is that you? What do you do? Mother Ruth is pious and has nothing to hide. Need you to come quick now. Something's happened to Mercedes. And it's going to move and start looking over Mercedes and getting, like, making sure that she is seemly, not, you know, like, mm -hmm. making sure her clothes aren't riled up, riled up or anything like that. I'll keep this very simple. It's the mm -hmm. day move. What are you afraid of happening here? Uh, that, uh, I think it's pretty simple that Ruth will be uh, misjudged as the killer yeah. of Mercedes. Uh, you'll, you can roll plus composure okay. or you can roll plus presence if you are, if you have an argument for it, but, um, I would say presence just by the sheer thought of like, you walk into the room and you see somebody and it's a person of the cloth that, that immediate, like, okay. Yeah. I'm with oh, you. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Then. Okay. No disadvantage then. That's a 10, six plus two plus two, 10. Nice. Ten. All right, then go ahead and narrate this the rest of this scene before we move on. Um, I think uh we see the neighbor come up and go, Good heaven What the hell happened? And uh Mother Calvo's just gonna hold up the handkerchief with the the daisy on it. Uh and say, Go get the marshal or somebody, somebody whoever's in charge of this lawless and sinful town. I'll get her ready for last rites and is going to like sit over Mercedes and like cut brush her hair out of her face and everything. And then, you know, just sit with her a little bit until somebody comes to take her away, gets, gets her ready for burial. Arkansas. And, oh, sorry. I didn't realize you're going. Sorry. Continue. Oh, no, 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 no. That's fine. That's fine. That's a good place to stop off. Arkansas. Scanning the crowd. Managing the stall all by your lonesome. Trying to keep an eye out for that coward Jim McKinley. How do you feel? Um, Probably like some, like he has some pressure. Like he feels like he's pressured. He feels like he's, he, he can't let Blackheart down. He's got to get revenge. Mm -hmm. That's what he's feeling. I'm going to give you the condition, the expectation of revenge. That'll be your complication. As for your actual clue, let's see here. <laughs> this is a fucking great clue. <laughs> oh, I have to do this. Um, you don't see the coward Jim McKinley, but you do see stumbling onto the street, um, clutching a bloodied shoulder. You see Deputy Wainwright stumble out. Uh, and like uh, stagger against a nearby building and lean against it for support, move hand showing a gunshot wound in his shoulder. Uh -huh. Um, when you rush over to him, he goes, uh, "Arkansas, oh God, you gotta, you've been shot before, right? All right, is this bad? Am I gonna die? No, I didn't get you in the gizzards. You'll be all right. Just walk it off." It hurts like hell. As a as a lawman, you gotta toughen up. I Wait, was, right? Put I was just pressure on it. I was just doing my nightly patrol around North El Paso, and I I I heard the shot. Someone someone shot me, Mark, and so you gotta tell the marshal. Where's the marshal? Smash cut to uh, the sex scene. Uh, so yes, your formal clue. Uh, smash cut to the smashing, but your formal clue is um, 
And I, the reason I, it's because it's just the most popular side character in town, which I gotta say, Deputy Wayne, right? <laughs> is shot and wounded by an unseen shooter from a dark alley in North El Paso. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark a mask to bump that up to a ten, but uh, okay, so sorry, no expectation sorry, revenge. Right. Yep. All right, so he, that is your clue. So no expectation of revenge, very fun. Um, very good. Uh, and then. Yeah, your complication, Andrew. I think I like the idea of... Let me take a look at something real quick. Hmm. I think I'll just keep it simple. You just remove the marked love letter from your inventory. Like, you, 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 you've given that to someone, and so, hmm. like, you can just... It's no longer mechanically available to you, so I'll keep it as a pretty soft reaction. Wow, that is pretty soft. Mm -hmm. Unlike Marshall Harrington. Hey oh anyway. Uh, sometimes I see it perfectly teed up and I just need to swing. <laughs> um anyway. Totally inconsistent, but we are here for a good time and a long time. Um, yeah. I feel like we see like Dr. Clarkson like refastening his belt. And, you know, uh, just saying, well, that's not at all what I expected, Mr. Harrington. But mm -hmm. I have to say, if anything, I can see why they call you vigilant. Though perhaps dutiful is more the appropriate word. I consider that El Paso is a town of very friendly folks. So <laughs> might as this is how you say hello to a neighbor, I might have to move to El Paso permanent-like. <laughs> what's the I... real reason for this arrangement though mr harrington you can see he's not entirely comfortable calling you andrew he says mm -hmm. the love letter was well needless to say did not expect such beautiful prose from a man of your reputation oh i do I'll be honest with you, I do have a quite a history, a little bit uh, unscrupulous compared to previous marshals of this town, but I think you may be familiar with that. But I don't think we should be judged for, for eternity for things we've done in the past and that we can be redeemed for the mm. future. Indeed. You're starting to sound like that local priest of yours. Mother Calvo, was it? How is she faring? I heard she recently took a bullet in the neck. It was as though God himself intervened and saved her life. Ha! I indeed, perhaps. Look, Mr. Harrington, I'm no fool. I assume I'd be correct in assuming that this letter, beautiful as it may be that you presented me with, you did not write it for me. It did seem pretty all-encompassing and vaguely worded, like it could be applied to anyone, and you just simply chose to give it to me as overtures for this sort of uh, dalliance? Mm. Hey, you caught me, I guess, but but you are a clever man. But mm. I, do, I, I do... I do have to ask... Because, well, frankly, I know Ghost Be Gone doesn't really work, but however, you do have some sort of control over ghosts, and I really need to know how, how, because that could save this town, and I would be indebted for you forever if you were just to tell, tell me. Indebted to me forever? Mm -hmm. Monetarily? Monetarily, or something else. I'm not some common street whore. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, Mr. Harrington. You're good, but you're not that good. Uh, no, no. I meant other things, other favors. I am still, despite my horrendous reputation at the moment, I'm still the marshal of the town. For your claims that Ghost Be Gone doesn't work, that I take dear offense with. It works just as intended. But all the same, I hear your arguments. He weighs your words. You can roll 
information plus presence. Mm -hmm. No disadvantage from being marked by the grifter because technically you marked the grifter back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zinger. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is a 10. 10 total? 10 total. Very good. Uh, you know what? I will mark a mask to bump it up to a 12. Oh my fucking god. We're getting mastermind clues left, right, and center. I told you we were speed running this. Indeed. We cut away. Graves. You rolled a seven, I believe, right? Or Yep, seven. Yeah. You'll do it. However, I think the gun goes off as you because your intention was to touch him i believe right oh yeah this dude's dying this dude's 100. dying yeah. <laughs> I, I i've given up all sort of talking to him gotcha you touch him that's gonna happen for sure i'll narrate that momentarily but i think uh well hmm i'm, I'm thinking of things real quick i'm, I'm now i'm now oh I know what I'm doing. What the gun g does go off. You don't feel the bullet rip through you. <gasps> but we do hear a soft thud. And the bullet went astray and struck your raven. No! My bird! <laughs> bird is shot. Damn. And you can remove that from your uh, <laughs> personal quarters. Unless you mark a mask, but yes, the shot goes off and the raven nearby takes the bullet for you. I might mark a mask to keep I'll let you think on that bird. for a moment, but I'll narrate what happens. Uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll let you narrate at least like how you touch him because I kind of want to like, hear um, how you imagine like doing this tact, you know, tact, uh, tactly and all that. I think like by this point, Graves already has their gloves off and this dude has this gun shaking in his hands pressed against either probably his head if not his chest and he reaches out and grabs this man's wrist that is holding the gun and doesn't even try to really move it away so much as just grabs his wrist can you do me a favor and yes. read the second half of the death incarnate move out loud for everyone to hear oh yes oh yes i will let me get back up to this now when you say second half which part do I need to start with? Starting with if. If you mean for them to die, the Keeper can declare that they are protected by the wounded knight and shall instead live. If they do so, the side character's survival becomes a clue or a mastermind clue, Keeper's choice. We are speed running. It's a mastermind clue. Yes. Which will, because that'll bring us to layer that two. That'll us. bring us to layer five. Or like, uh, the, that'll bring us to five. Three in one night phase. Wild. So as you touch him, nothing happens to him. And you you know that nothing will happen to him. You feel resistant. Something here is ensuring his protection. What? He wrenches his hand free from your grasp, dropping his pistol in the process and just panting and sweating and scratching at his wrist as if he's worried it's going to fall off. Uh, he just sprints off into the darkness, fleeing. But you stare at what should have been his end, and it was not his end. You can add that clue to the mastermind list. We can phrase it later. Andrew, you bumped up your result as well, mm -hmm. which brings us to layer two of the game. Let's go back to the unseen, and we'll do our final round of night phase scenes. I believe this is Wes. I can't remember. We see Calhoun finally after everything. Finally get back to, to the jail. He kicks his boots in the doorway and goes, Whew. I tell you, I just had myself a 
string of misfortunes happened. Why? Had to deal with your loud ass? Walking around? Can't remember the words home on the range? I just heard that the night previous. Stumbled on two people clapping against each other like animals, rutting. Nothing important going on. Doesn't seem to be there's no crime whatsoever. Oh, brother. As he turns and we see the jail cell where the sleeping prisoner was is open. Just listing by itself. Calhoun goes, uh, somebody get the get the marshal, get the sheriff, get somebody that's in that's in charge around here, please. As you he can hear a couple of people running in, they go, Calhoun, Calhoun, what happened? He goes, I, I tell you what, I was going over and I was showing that that damned old Harrison what fur. He could, he wouldn't stop heckling me. He wouldn't stop heckling me. And as you can tell, I went and I went and to go show him what fur. And he overpowered me. He overpowered me and he beat me. And I got some good licks on him. He, I need some good licks. But he, he, he's run off that way. He, he hopped. You can see the bars right there. He took the bars out of the window. And he went ahead and he put them back afterwards just to rub it in my face and everything. All right? I'm a... I'm trying to do my best at true love. You can't have me trying to do all these things, doing patrol, watching over prisoners. It's it's not right. It's not Christian life. And that's where we end Calhoun. Andrew, your clue and your mastermind clue. Your regular clue. Let's see. He says, Mr. Harrington, I am curious, though. Perhaps you could be candid with me more so than you already have been. Is that your real name, Mr. Harrington? Andrew Harrington. I assume you've already surmised that Dr. Jebediah F. Clarkson is not mine. Uh, I suppose it depends on what you define as a real name. Quite so. Uh, I think a I name can be like a hand-me-down set of clothes. Mm -hmm. After a Dr. Jebediah Clarkson in San Antonio was murdered some years back, well, the name was just sitting there. Mm -hmm. That's your clue. But as you were saying. Yeah, sometimes the handy down the names don't fit as well. Harrington is my real last name. Andrew is a name I just picked up. It's like while my... you're speaking with him. At one point you're talking. You look out the window very theatrically, you know, looking like mm. like monologuing while you look out the window. You have the cosmic passage mark, don't you? Mm -hmm. For a moment, as you turn to face the window, you jump back, startled. There's a figure hanging outside your window, a rope strewn, hanging limp in front of your window, a shadowy silhouette. Uh, when you blink, they're gone. That was your mastermind clue, a vision of a hooded man hanging from a gallow. And Dr. Clarkson says, Mr. Harrington, are you quite all right? Uh, a pastor plays tricks in the eye sometimes, has a sense of humor. Let's have everyone go around then and narrate their closing scenes for this night phase. I'm just uh, there with Deputy um, Wainwright, and I, I whistle real loud and, and yell for Doc, Doc Albers. And uh, the people that are, that are crowded up at the Ghost Be Gone, I just whistle and 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 say, is Doc in there? Somebody get the Doc. Wainwright's got thin blood.
I think we just uh, see Andrew Harrington sort of still like having this little conversation with Dr. Clarkson. She says, oh, but I really don't care all that much of what your real name is. You are Dr. Clarkson. That's all this town has ever known you by, so that's what you shall be. I hope that in the future we could maybe collaborate together further uh, and bring you effectively onto the committee outright because, well, you have talents. I think Mother Ruth uh, makes sure that people come and attend to Mercedes uh, and then makes herself scarce because she's going to have to do some work later with Mercedes for the funeral, probably. Um, but as we see her walking away and walking down the street, I think she hears like a like a a train whistle or something. And she stops and she turns and she unfolds that note that says, get out of town before you're too late. Before it's too late. And she opens her Bible and puts it in as like a bookmark. And then just walks down the street. I'm marking the darkened threshold to keep my bird. Um, <laughs> and that is narrated scene where the host fears being destroyed and you share in their existential dread. And I think we just saw it. It is the moment where Graves grabs this man's wrist and he does not die. And for a moment, the host Bartholomew Graves and death itself share in one feeling of pure existential dread of being destroyed and never coming back. And it is the most visceral feeling death has ever felt is that everyone very good let's end the night phase move into the dawn and we'll jump into stars and wishes no threat has been resolved yet but let's answer dawn questions starting with mother ruth did you experience an echo in the night Yes, I would say with the calling of the someone call the marshal, call the sheriff, call somebody that's in charge mm -hmm. of the sound. Happened like that. between the two of them. Did you try to convince someone to do the right thing? Yes, you did. Uh -huh. And did you decide not to give a damn turning your back on righteousness? Uh, no, actually, quite right. the opposite. Then you yeah. may take two. Graves, did you experience an echo in the night? I tried my best with the uh, the music. The music box. Mm -hmm. Yep, I caught mm -hmm. that one. That was nice. Excellent. Uh, did you have a misunderstanding with another character because they perceived you as the host? I think the opposite happened tonight, so no. Yeah. Very <laughs> true. Um, did you take time to puzzle over the human condition? Does fearing actually dying count? Uh, I would, like, the thing that you puzzled over was, like, a Andrew Harrington's <laughs> yes. uh, Arkansas yeah, plan. True. Yeah, just god are... why are you like this uh yes you may mark that one you take an advance sick. graves first advance <laughs> Woo! yay I'll it took me six episodes <laughs> <laughs> uh you were just warming up getting on fire and on all cylinders now uh andrew harrington did you experience that going tonight uh yes with uh the rendezvous yes. uh <laughs> did you sh stare mournfully at someone who reminds you of the old marshal uh, not really, but, uh, like, the closest we I've gotten was over the love letter of, like, mm -hmm. it was written generically, but it, it was sort of meant for someone else, mm -hmm. but... It eh, wasn't I quite, yeah, no. Yeah, Did you live quite. up to the ideal of doing justice? I don't think this counts as I justice. I really don't think it counts as justice. <laughs> but you take one, so you still advance, I believe. <laughs> yes. That's very great. Uh, and then Arkansas, did you experience that going the night? The whistle, yeah. Yeah. Did you explain to someone how soft living has spoiled them? Yeah, with the uh, with the med with the candy slash medicine to the marshal. 
and you did complain a whole bunch so you also take a uh advance so there you go three do we have any outstanding janice mass prompts to narrate i see a couple on the marshall and calamity mm -hmm. do you guys want to do those now or do you want to wait i can, i can do mine um go for it narrate uh a flashback to your first job on the trail and uh we just see uh a, a way much younger uh, version of Arkansas and like his clothes don't really fit. His pants are pulled up too high and, and he's, he's real earnest. They're, like they're moving cattle from uh, probably like Texas up to, to Kansas and he's real earnest and he's trying to show the older uh, cow pokes, you know, that he's, he's in it for the long haul. He's a lifer. Um, that's the flashback. Um I'm thinking about picking up the uh, that that custom move since it fits with my last. Did you were you okay with that, Alex? You're muted. Yeah, I liked I liked it. So I'll send you some thoughts about it. But yeah, I think it's a great idea. Okay, that's what I'm gonna take, and we can talk about that next time. And uh, chaotic, you gonna do yours? Or you gonna wait? Mm, yeah, I'll do mine. All right, go for I it. Narrates a flashback to when you fled to El Paso and the mar old marshal hid you. They were a friend, a family member, or a former lover. I think we see Andrew Harrington in El Paso. He sort of a, got hired on as sort of a as a sort of as a cow hand uh just uh someone who helps uh hurdle cattle and whatnot just trying to keep moving just try to uh, flee the authorities whenever he could see fit uh refusing to give a name a first name only keeping the last name harrington because there's enough harringtons in the world that they can't possibly find him specifically right the old marshal he he was a kind soul he was just a couple of years older than me similar age and really did not do the whole marshal thing properly not like not like a beacon of justice or by any sort of the stretch of the imagination. He was just a member of the community. He was just everyone's friend. He was just the person who made sure people did the right thing. And everyone can be change their path and they can become a new person. Old Marshall's uh, first name was Andrew. And, well, we got closer and closer, and we, we fell in love. I told him that of what I did, I confessed my sins. And he told me that I am not designed by any sort of predetermined fate, whether it's from lineage or from God. I'm my own person, and I should choose who I should become. And I make fate a joke of, like, I really wish I could become you. And so that's how Harrington became Andrew Harrington. Beautiful. Let's go to Stars and Wishes, everyone. I might have to I might have to roll out of here sooner mm -hmm. rather than later. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll go first. Uh stars. Um for Wes, I have one for you started off with the bed and breakfast at the uh, four aces outlaw ranch and then quickly changed it to the boarding house. But at first I was like, a oh, what? Um so you give me a, a star for for catching me off guard. Uh, also for Wes, I I really like the uh, the part two of your of your flashback 
where we see, you know, the first part is they're 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 going to start their own community, and then it just goes to it goes to hell. Uh, that was that was awesome. Your Calhoun deputy Calhoun was really was really fun. Um, and then your quote, I liked. Whoever's in charge of this lawless town, like I feel like Ruth's turned against us. Uh, for chaotic, uh, our conversation. What are we? You know what? What? What do you do for the Mitchless community? Um, and then um, getting to know the man behind the bottle. That was a great quote from from chaotic, and uh, successfully su seducing Clarkson. Uh, for B, Sin and Raven was a very creative use of a of a personal item. Uh, so two two stars for that. And and then your home on the range echo of the music box is very creepy. Uh, for Alex, uh, Fran Walsh was awesome. And Fran Walsh versus Ruth, a pious Ruth Calvo. I wonder how it would have been if it had if it had been the fallen Ruth Calvo. That would have been a different conversation. Um, and then your reaction to you're going to give him the love letter, uh, Alex, and then. And chaotic yeah uh that was that was a star for that um wishes uh i'm gonna get that coward jim mckinley it's the last thing i do oh my god so many stars so many stars everyone's always fabulous um i really love arkansas's arc with the like because he's always so funny and then we get to see him with the Blackheart Vermilion, and it is so deeply tragic every time. And I'm just, I feel so terrible for him. And then he start like the way you handled him with the crowd of the Ghost Be Gone people was so good. And I don't shooting every time you like had a had a stomach cramp just like killed me. That was so good, just absolutely delicious. I really love it. It's it's so good. I and I loved uh, Arkansas and Andrew Harrington's conversation. The "What are we?" is a very funny thing to ask a colleague. Um, <laughs> I, I was that was wild, and I really loved it. And I love their dynamic. It's so strange, and I love that you seduced the uh, the, the 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 grifter, Doctor Clarkson. That was really a great direction. Not not just mechanically, because your your presence is way higher than all of your other stuff, but also like that's narratively very good. And Alex, the way you handled the constant smash cut of every time someone was like, "Where is the marshal?" and it was a smash cut to them making out, that was a very good way to handle that. I loved that so much. And yeah, I just I also I love that Andrew is the old marshal's name. That's deeply romantic and also really fucked up um and i really love it uh alex i really love how well you've handled this many threats oh my god good job holy shit um just astounding astounding work i love your side characters i always every time fran was a delight i love the way you handle dr clarkson and i also really love all these like really unsettling mastermind clues you've thrown at us like oh who who the note for ruth oh of my seat every time it's so good oh my goodness and i just i really love the way you're playing pious mother ruth it never feels out of character it does feel her priorities have shifted in a way that makes a lot of sense with that condition and that whole thing and it's a really cool way to see you shift this character into something more like straight laced and once again your bible verses are always like off the hook like it just like obscure shit i've never really thought about very, very good. Just really. And she has a husband? Had a husband? What happened to him? I'm so... What? Ah! So yes, I that's I want to know what happened to Ruth's husband. Um, huh. And I'm very excited to see what the next layer of this mastermind threat is. Ooh, just I'm so hyped for all of this. Uh, yeah, I, I gotta give a star to Arkansas because like, I think like individually like the scene was very good but from a big like bigger like wider scope context like andrews and arkansas are very very similar stories they are about people who loved very deeply 
and then lost it and are coping now in different ways. Uh, Arkansas is finding it at, at, at the bottom of, uh, of a bottle, whereas Andrew is fighting, <laughs> trying to find a replacement effectively with anyone and any and everyone. So, so it's just kind of different vices for different folks. Uh, uh, I just, I love the scene with Graves and like Andrew was just like, we shouldn't be all investigating the same thing. You need to go elsewhere. Go away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like the lighter way i hope and uh mother ruth calvo getting things done like she is the responsible person of the group and just was like mm, we need to be investigating the daisy man like come on y'all uh and alex i just love Dr dr clarkson uh just like he's like like even if, if like i caught him a little bit unawares like he's still is manipulating the conversation to like get one up on me and i'm just like ooh this is going to be a fun uh, ongoing thing yeah i want to give uh stars to alex for juggling this many uh threats and everything it's 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 a lot it's a lot to do it's a lot to do um but you're doing it and you're nailing it and you're nailing these interactions and you're nailing this pacing really well, which is really good. Um, and it's very like attention grabbing. Um, good job on the unseen prompts. Uh, I like how they're like, we have an unseen that didn't feel malicious at all or anything. It was just a nice leisurely stroll compared to all the shit we were dealing with on the opposite sides. Cause sometimes with unseens, it kind of feels a little bit like in the same, like it's the same kind of tone. So I like that we have like these moments where it's just like, no, nah, it's just quiet. It's just happening. It's just this deputy Calhoun out and about. Um, uh, B, uh, putting on, marking the darkened threshold to save a raven as the avatar of death, I think is a very Graves thing to do. It's not death. I think that was a bit of Graves coming out, almost, of like, let me flex a little bit of control. So I think it's a very interesting way to kind of like do that and frame that. I think that's a very cool, uh, nifty little thing there. Even if it wasn't intentional, it felt intentional and it felt thematic. Um, Harrington... Uh, A for boning down Dr. Clarkson. Uh, let me double check here real quick just to check my notes and everything like that. Um, I think, uh, the only way we could have gotten like an S tier ranking is that if you would have gotten a mastermind clue while, while fucking Clarkson, but you know, that's like Michael Jordan shit. And you're out here putting up numbers like Steph Curry. So you're doing all right. Um, Arkansas, uh, the rambling, the, the bits of like what sound like incoherence, which are actually quite coherent. You just have to pay attention to it, but nobody pays attention to Arkansas. It's, is one of my favorite things because like, he'll be like spouting off words of wisdom, but it just has nothing to do with the current thing that's happening, but it has something to do that has happened already or will be happening and i think that's just like really good like a plus just kind of like playing like this kind of cal the calamity which is you know just this and like and like everybody else said having those shifts between like a more focused a more present around vermilion as opposed to this rambling drunk and you're doing a really good job with it of like this used to be somebody that was coherent and was a go-getter and everything like that and just you lose somebody close to you and like everything is just lost. It's gone. And you're doing a really good job with it. Um, wishes. Um, I don't know. Let me, uh, let me do more charitable acts to get out of pious, you know, you know, let me do these things. Uh, let me help you. There we go. I'll keep mine quick because we have a stinger scene that I want Daniel to hear before he has to bolt. Um, yeah, no, I, a lot of fun. Got to love the interaction with Dr. Clarkson. Uh, very, quite literally, I'm glad we stuck to the joke of the seduction of Dr. Jebediah Clarkson. Very funny. Didn't actually expect that to happen. That was great. And then obviously uh, this was happening in the chat. Just people were chanting, kiss, kiss him, kiss <laughs> in the lead of that. So I saw it coming when, when you started to pitch your item. I'm like, oh, fuck. I know what's going to happen here. That was a lot of fun. That was really funny. And I liked that scene a lot. 
like I said, there's a lot of Deadwood sensuality happening in this campaign that I'm a fan of. I'm a fan of the HBO, like, Deadwood era, like, and hard cut to a sex scene kind of, like, scene transitions. There's something that kind of, like, inherently com uh, comedic, but also, like, cinematically, like, well-paced. So that was a good moment. Um, really enjoyed Arkansas uh, uh, speaking with um, uh, uh, Dudley <laughs> as you shot. Um, Graves interacting with Dudley... No, sorry, no, Graves interacting with Andrew in, in Arkansas as they were discussing their plan was really fucking funny too. But but I really enjoyed the little standoff Graves got to have and the uh, the way that you narrated that B with like the sinister uh, incorporating the element of the dark and threshold prompt in there. That was really cool. Um, a lot going on here, man. And then, yeah, Mother Ruth's, um, uh, uh, again, spouting Bible verses as insults is so fucking cool. Good job, Wes. I mean, that scene that you had with... Um, the uh the brothel matron uh was was pretty great uh so i i was i was just grinning ear to ear that you just pulled it out and it was such a great insult as well um yeah i think i mean i i also just have a lot of stars just for the session in general but just to keep it brief um wishes i'm just looking forward to the next session any other stars or wishes i'm ben looking for i'm looking forward to bringing dr clarkson onto the committee <laughs> <laughs> your new boyfriend dr clarkson um mm -hmm. very good and then before we go we see the open desert dark at night text appears on the screen 1870 and then in parentheses 12 years ago go 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 we see a pair of horses riding hard and fast through the desert as midnight fast approaches two black clothed figures are at a hard ride whipping at the reins when one of the figures they go tumbling one of the horses throws a, sh a shoe the horse tumbles over the man falls to the ground with a hard grunt um the other rider pulls the rein sharply back and just goes, Edward! Uh, and uh, the, the man goes, fuck! God damn it! Horse through a shoe! And quickly scans, and he goes, nah. Nah, I can't get, we can't run, we can't use this. And the other figure says, oh, get on my horse, we can go together. And Edward says, no. <sighs> horse can't carry both of us and the loot. Scans the horizon very quickly. There. Horse ranch. And uh, very quickly begins to rush through the open desert to a horse ranch at the edge of El Paso. He keeps himself low. This goes over the fence. And we see that in his attempts to steal a horse, he's caught. Very quick shots follow. Very fast justice. The town of El Paso very quickly had him hanged that night for the crime of attempted horse thief. Edward Reynolds, hands bound behind his back, noose placed around his neck, is dropped from the gallows with a snap as his feet kick and he struggles and twitches and coughs and chokes and wheezes. We hear the sick crunch of his esophagus and trachea being crushed by the pressure and the weight as from the crowd, Isabella Reynolds watched on in horror That expression transitions close up of Isabella Reynolds, modern day. Despite 12 years having passed, we see no visible sign of age having touched her. As the camera pans back, we see that she and the conductor, Edward, are standing outside at the edge of El Paso near the open desert. Edward has a pocket watch out, examining the time as it click, 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 ticks second by second, he flicks it shut. Isabella looks over at him, kind of leaning her parasol away from the beating sun as uh, dawn has broken over the desert. She says, are you sure this is the place, my dear? And Edward just kind of nods, scanning the thing and says, that's the trick about these kind. They emerge at the day so they can walk at night. Give him a moment. 
He'll be back shortly. We hear a soft scratching sound, and Edward shifts a slight smile and says, There he is, right on schedule. A couple of pale fingers push themselves out of the dirt of the ground as hands begin to hold dirt and desert dust away as a figure begins to unbury themselves from the earth and crawl out of a grave that did not previously exist. Clothes covered in filth, dragging out of the ground, emerging. We see the bounty hunter climbing back out from his temporary banishment, climbing back out from hell. As the Reynolds look down at him and Isabella says, Well, good morning, kind sir. We heard you're quite good at tracking down a target. Are you looking for new work? And we will cut there as part of layer three of the campaign with five clues. I have now made the bounty hunter a servant of the mastermind and it can no longer be resolved. I'll see you all next time.